Welcome back. So I'll be discussing today this problem number of subtraction containing all three characters. Let's uh, read the problem. So the problem says uh, we are given a string consisting only of characters a, b, and c, and we need to return the number of subtraction containing at least one occurrence of all these characters a, b, and c. So we need to count the number of subtraction. That contain at least one time. That means uh, there will be at least one occurrence of all these characters. So let's look at the input. So the input here is A B C A B C, and the output is ten. Now let's uh, move forward and look at the explanation. A B C, and this is the string here, and then A B C A, which is this. A B C A B, which is this. A B C A B C, this. Then B C A, which is this. Then B C A B. As you can see, that for this B C A, we have found uh, that occurrence of B is one, C is one, A is one. Then the, we include the next B, as it will only increment the count of B and all. A, B, C will be more than zero. We can say they are occurring at least one time. Then we'll include this C also. Now they are going for C, A, B, and then we'll include also this C. So A, B, C. If you observe here, we can use two for loop for this problem, and like we can declare three variables and the uh, the for loop uh, we can use like this oh, sorry uh, this is for a is 0 b count is 0 c count is 0 and our j will start from i and it will go all the way till the end and this will be my count variable and now we'll uh, check if this position s of j is if it is a then increment a else if, if it is g, b then we'll uh, increment the count of b else we'll increment the count of c now we need to check if the count of these three variables are greater than zero means they have occurred for a single time then we'll increment count means this is a valid subtrain which contains at least one occurrence of all these three characters now what we need to do is return this tnt count and this variable will be having all the count of subtrain having occurrence of all these three characters at least once but if we look at the constraint here it is 5 into 10 to the power 4 and we need to perform it in one second which we will not be able to do because the time complexity of this code is n square if you take, take a closer look it is n square length if we say the length of s is n then the maximum length 5 into 10 to the power 4 then it would be result in more than 10 to the power 8 operations so it will not it will be giving getting time limit exceed here you can you can check here the saving a little bit of time ah uh, yeah here you can go here you go it's giving time limit exceed if you are going for n square so let's move back and have a closer look to this solution so uh, taking the first example if you see here the first substring they have given is ABC. After this substring, do we need to check all these elements? Because we for the first one here, we have the car, we have all the three occurrences at least one. Now what we are doing is uh, after this, how many substring it will form till the end? Let me remove all this. A, B, C, A, B, C. Let's 
give them index name if you look uh, first if we go for a b c for at the index of 0 1 2 then after we have encountered this we'll be having all this will be if we add this it will be counted as a substring valid substring we wanted if we are if we found all this and any number any element present after this whether it is a b or c it will be added to our answer means once we have encountered all these three elements the the characters coming after this position means after this position we will be adding it to the answer so what this means is let's assume this is our answer so what we will doing is uh, the last current means or uh, the last occurrence uh, between these three means uh, if we are present at zero then we are will be looking the last occurrence or we can say the first occurrence it will uh, now it will be right if we say first occurrence of a b c so a is at zero b is at one c is at two so uh, we'll be finding the maximum maximum first occurrence the maximum position uh, the maximum position here will be two and we'll be adding this by subtracting with the length of the string what is the length of the string here is let's assume n is the length of the string here uh, n will be 6 as you can see n is 6 and the maximum distance here for c, where we are finding c is 2 so answer is initially it was 0 now it would become 0 plus x minus what is the position of c here the uh, it is 2 so our answer will become 4 and if you see here in, in the here explanation after encounter encountering the first abc then the string formed with this abc there will be four string formed with this first abc 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 a then abc ab a, B, C, A, B, C. So we have included this. Now what we'll be doing is now now we are at position one. Now we we move to position one. Now the uh, for this where we are encountering the first B. B is encountered at one when we are at position one and Standing at 1, the first C we are we encountered it is at 2. The first A we encountered after position 1 is 3. So the maximum between these 3, which is 3. So what we'll be doing is now the answer is 4 plus maximum between maximum position 6 minus the maximum position 3. Now it would be 6 minus 3, 3. 4 plus 3, 7. Now, if you will take a look, this would be the first one BCA, then it would be BCAB, then it would be BCAB, as you can also take a look in the explanation BCA, BCAB, BCABC. So, we'll, with this, at position 1, if we are standing, we can form 3 substrings. So, this is right. Now, move forward. We are now at position 2. Uh, standing at position 2, the first A is encountered at 3, the first B is encountered at 4, the first C is encountered at 2, standing at position 2. Now, our uh, answer would be 7 plus psi n minus, what is the maximum between these three variables? It is 4, so subtract 4 and this is 2. Now we are starting at 2. Just look how many strings you can form. C, A, B. This is the first string. And then C, A, B, C. So you can only form 2. Now let's move at position 3. So starting at position 3, the first occurrence of A is at 3 only. B is at 4. And C, it is at 5. 
So let's go ahead and add this to our answer. So 6 minus, oh, let me connect it. 2 is in this 9. 6 minus the maximum position between A, B, C is 3, 4, 5. Maximum of them is 5. So this is, yeah, I have I done, yes, I have done it right wrong here. It is 9. So now our answer is 10. Now we were at 3, now we will move to 4. I where we can find a standing at 4, we if we, we will look, look at right, we, if we can find any a, we cannot. So a 0 means there will be nothing, there will be no substring now which will contain all a, b, c. So we'll, this is the base condition where we will be terminating. I hope you have understood this logic. If not, you can go for some test cases. Now, as we will be, we need to do some pre-processing for finding the position of A, B, C. So, I'll be using Q. I'm using three different Q here for A, B, C. As there are only three characters in the string. So, I'll be using this. Now, I'll be looping. And uh, let's say this is the length of the string. I'll be looping once. And if this character is A, then what I'll do, if it is this A, then I'll push its position. Else, if it is a B, I'll push this position on B. Else, if it is a C, I'll push it on C. Now we have all these positions like we can say for A we will be having A at 0, 2 B is present at 1 and 4 C is present at uh, we say, uh, 2 and 5 So this will be in our A, B, C, Q Now as I have already discussed the condition for terminating the for is when any a b c is zero so what we'll doing do is if a dot empty means we'll be checking if any of the q is not empty there exist there exists all at least one occurrence of all We'll be taking a count variable which will count the number of substring. Okay, now we'll also need to take a, a i which will point to the position where we are standing. Now this character will point to the i position means the position we are standing at. We are standing at position zero. So we need to check. If this is A, we can assign B to 0, it will not affect our answer. And then we need to find the maximum. If A is at 0, then we need to find the first occurrence of B and C. So, what we do is we look at B dot front and C dot front. And we will remove, we will pop this index we'll, as we have already a present as 0, b present at 1, c present at 2. So we will be moving forward and popping this, pop, popping this. Now we need to go for b. If this character was b, then we need to find, like you can see here, this is when we will be at 1, we will be checking the first occurrences of C and A because at one we'll be having this uh, maximum occurrences or maximum position at which C and A will occur we'll focus on this so what we'll write here A dot friend and C dot friend now we'll pop B because we'll be moving forward same for case C we will compare the position at which 
which will bind A and B and will pop C. Now we will be using this formula. So uh, let's make it answer only. So answer plus N minus B. And don't forget to increment I. Now we will be returning answer. Let's see if it runs successfully or not. Yes, it does. Let's see if it runs on the hidden disk. Oh, yes, it does. So you can see the runtime 32 and milliseconds, and also uh, memory usage. You can see. So if you look at this, the complexity, this loop is going for n times and here it is all it might run for n times in worst case we can say when all all if, if string is made of a single character then we will be might I don't think so it, this, it, it would be okay but we assume that it would be going for n minus 3 we can say n minus 3 as it was the case here so n minus 3 so n plus n minus 3 it would be 2 n minus 3 which will be a proc which we will call n so this code will be then will run in below of n we can say so thank you don't forget to hit the hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video 